All right. Good afternoon. You guys doing good? I like the colored seats. This is nice. My name is Chad Kafka. I am from Wisconsin. I work in Franklin Public Schools as a technology integration specialist. Uh, been there seven years, starting my eighth year this coming year. Basically means I get together with other teachers, help team plan, help drive our technology vision in our district. And I was the one that kind of got Google Apps going in, uh, in our school district, and we started that at our middle school. So what this presentation is aimed at is kind of giving you some tips, some strategies, some methods for how to use Google Drive with students, hence the name Google Driving with students. Uh, the resources for this are all in this Google Slides presentation. There is a short URL there if you want to make a note of that or snap a few pictures. I'll leave this up here for a minute. I'm also going to put it up at the end in case you miss it. Uh, tinyurl.com slash ISTE13Google. And these are this just straight to these slides. I've linked up some other resources in these slides, but everything stems off of that. While you're taking pictures and whatnot, I am a Google certified teacher. I'm also a Google certified trainer, so I do a lot of presentations like this, just sharing our successes with what we've done, how you can best use Google Drive, strategies and things to think about when you're working with teachers, and explaining how to kind of set up their workflow uh, to be more efficient. The goal with technology is to obviously use technology to make our lives a little bit easier, right? So with Google Drive, there's some things that I want to share with you that we do uh, specifically to, to help with that. So um, looks like everybody's done snapping pictures, so we'll jump ahead. Uh, some very important things I want to mention just before getting into some of the resources I'm going to share. One thing that I think is very important, there's a lot of great tools for sharing in Google Drive, sharing different files to students and whatnot. I would suggest, though, as a teacher, as an educator, you still teach the kids how to share. There are some great scripts, some of which I'm going to mention. There are some great products you can add in uh, to make that, make that more of a, a seamless issue for the teacher. But I think we still need to teach our kids how to share files by actually creating something, clicking the share button, understanding they can put in someone else's address. We can't get away from that because that's what these tools are really based around in Google Drive. So what we do is we have Google Apps rolled out in our district for uh, first we did seventh and eighth grade, and then that was last year. This school year that just ended, we, uh, we started branching out from the middle in our district and kind of working up into the high school and down into the elementary schools. And so at grades three, four, and five, we got to, we got to fifth and sixth this year. We're planning to do fourth and third this coming year. Um, teachers can use scripts if kids aren't, aren't getting the, the whole sharing thing. Uh, they can use scripts to easily share a file to a student. But it's still important to, share those to show those kids how to share the files to the teacher. So at its base level, I guess, when we're doing this with teachers, right now we currently, we have our teachers have the kids create a file. They do this together maybe one, two times through in class. Click the share button. Start typing your teacher's last name. And that's a tip that I do want to share with you. Anytime you have a big school district where you're sharing files, start with the person's last name because there are so many Michaels, there are so many Brian's, there are so many Peters that come up in that address book when you're typing the name in. So start with the person's last name. Whether it's a teacher or a student, it just comes up a lot quicker. Um, but we're teaching them to type in those names, share, getting, seeing the choices of, do I want that person to just view it? Do I want that person to be able to edit it? Do I want that person to be able to comment? We're doing mostly writing right now. We're getting into slide presentations with those lower levels as well. Um, but through that process and through that kind of setup, we, we teach them how to share. Grades 6, 7, and 8, we started using different shared folder structures. And I'll show you uh, some of how that's set up. Where we have the kids, if they're starting a course, they're starting a math course, they're starting a social studies course, a science course, they make a folder for that course. They share that folder to the teacher. So it's just kind of a little one-way one place between the teacher and the student. So this, the teacher in the end gets a bunch of folders, and we'll talk about naming conventions here in a minute, but the teacher gets a bunch of folders for each kid. So if the kid's turning something in, as we're, as we're used to with education, they put it in that folder, and then it's automatically shared to the teacher. It takes out a lot of the little steps with hit the share button, type the teacher's name for every single assignment. As long as they assign a file to that folder, the folder's already shared, the instantaneous sharing happens. And I'll show you a little bit of that structure as well. Grades 9 and 12, same thing. We're having some teachers there do some of the same folder structures. Uh, they, they can use scripts to set that up. The high school kids can you know, tend to understand more so that, OK, the teacher already set this up for me. It's in my shared area. I can, I can take that and put it where I need to. So we're still kind of working with high school there. So I just want to mention this before I get into the meat of everything, that teaching the kids those skills, I think, is very important. We can't lose sight of that and just run scripts for everything. Granted, there are some very powerful scripts that will help us do our stuff better. 
This is a student management guide that I put together with all the different ways to share files to students, and I'll pull it up here in a minute. Um, it's linked up in this presentation as well. You're welcome to take and use this. Over the last few years, when we were getting Google Drive going with our students, I found myself making short, quick little videos to show the teachers how to do things, so I put it all in one place, and that's this management guide. If I jump over to that, in the management guide, zoom out here a little bit. Whoops. Oh, get back here. Pop back up. In the management guide, it's basically broken into two sections. The first section is methods for sharing files to students. So when we talk about this stuff scaling, the teacher needs to think about if I've got 30 students, how am I going to efficiently and effectively get this file to my students? Or beyond that, if, if you're up in the middle grades or the high grades, you might have 150, 190, 200, 250 students. So how am I going to efficiently do that? So what I did in here was I kind of outlined, um, obviously, they could go into each individual Google Doc, hit the share button, type every kid's name, or choose a contact group every single time they want to share something. If you do that, you will not be a happy person. So I recommend not doing that, but it, it is an option. Uh, we have our teachers use the second method a lot. All of our teachers, we have them now have a Google site where they post their resources. So setting a file, if it doesn't have any kind of confidential information in it, they can set that file to anyone with the link, can view it, and they can just link that up on their school site. So if you're driving the kids to your teacher website, then you, know, you set up a structure there. Maybe you have a unit one page, a unit two page for your different resources. That method could work. And again, video linked up there to show that if you decide to explore this later. Uh, you can set up a folder and then share that one folder to everybody in your class. And you could set that folder to view only, and that would allow the kids, when they go into that folder, to be able to, to see that. So what we have our teachers do that choose this method is we have them name the folder very specifically. One of the other tips when you start using Google Drive, or if you are using Google Drive, is you got to think about when you're sharing things, you have to name it in such a way that other people know what it is. So when we're talking about naming our files, naming our folders, we have the teachers put their name. So my last name, Kafka, if I was teaching new media class, and then I just put the word file. So this tells the kids when it shows up in all of their Google Drives, if I share it to them using this method, oh, that's Mr. Kafka's files. And then anytime I put something in there, it's automatically going to be available to the kids in their own individual Google Drive. So naming conventions from the teacher standpoint, that's one convention that we use. Um, if you set that folder to, uh, or you go into that folder and you share that folder to a contact group or a Google group, there's differences between contact groups and Google groups. If we have some time, I'll, I'll jump into that. Um, but if you share that to a Google group or a contact group, that'll automatically disperse it to your students. On the student's end, when they go into their Google Drive and they go into Shared With Me, if I'm sorted by share date, up here at the top, if you're doing this you know, somewhat close to the time you have them in class, I would take your students in, show them, hey, this is where that folder is. They could very easily check that folder and say add to my drive, and then it would be available on their list of folders off on the left side. We have to teach kids structure, their own structure, to put together a structure, but we also have to set up some kind of structure for the kids to work in so that they know the expectations of the teachers. In my role, when working with many different teachers, uh, it, it became a little bit of a problem when we first started using Google Drive where one teacher was sharing files one way, another teacher was sharing files another way. Not that any one way is wrong, but we wanted to put some consistency to it, at least by grade level, or at least in the building, just to kind of have that workflow work. So when somebody was saying, oh, I shared this to my kids and I don't know what happened, then helping with that problem or diagnosing that problem could be a little bit easier as well. Uh, the fourth way to share, oh, I'm going to jump ahead. That's with Google Group. We mentioned that. Um, this is one of my favorite new little tweaks that Google made to Google Drive. When you go into a folder, uh, you go into the share settings for a folder, and what I mean by that, if you're new to Google Drive, is if I had a folder over here, when I mouse over these folders, this little option arrow allows me to mess with the options for that folder. So if I was going to share that folder, I could go to share and choose share again, or I could email it right to the individuals, either choice there. When I go into those share settings, and I set the folder to anyone who has the link can view that folder, that basically makes it so anyone I send that link to, I copy that, I paste it, I put it on my teacher website, I might email it to my students when we're starting out the term, the semester. Once they go to that link, 
what they see on their end is something like this, where whatever you have in that folder, this was Google Apps files that I've been collecting, and I sorted them by tool just for trainings and whatnot. Um, anyone that goes to that link, if they're signed into their Google account, they see this little Add to Drive button. So they could just click, students could click Add to Drive. That folder will then be put into their My Drive area over here, like we talked about a second ago. And that just, that's there for the term. So then anytime Mr. Kafka puts files in that folder, they're automatically there. They know they can go into Google Drive, go to Mr. Kafka's folder, and all that stuff is there. So this little tweak just made it more visual. Um, if, you're, if you're working with people that don't have Google Drive and they, you just want to share files to them, if they come here, they'll still be able to see the files. They'll still be able to go into a folder, open a spreadsheet, open a document, open a slide presentation. Uh, if they do sign in, then they get the choice to automatically add that folder to My Drive. And you might be thinking, OK, well, what if something happens and I want to take that right away? There is the ability when you go back into the share settings where you can change that link. So if that is a worry, um, you could do that. If you're worried about year to year, you could turn that ability off and then re return it on, and it, it'll, it'll help kind of troubleshoot that. So those are kind of the different ways that we work with sharing files to our students. As I mentioned, our school district went to um, a, a challenge, as we call it, because we didn't want to say project, because that sounds like work. So the challenge this year was for the teachers to have a Google site up and running by this coming Halloween. So this is the method we're going to suggest to them. If they're just putting stuff in there, copies of notes, um, if they're putting stuff in there that doesn't have kids in fir uh, first and last names, you're not running the risk of, of you know, um, affecting anyone's privacy, that's what this is for. If there is stuff like that, that's where you get into thinking about, OK, maybe I do need to share this directly to some individuals, a group, so that you do keep that privacy intact. In terms of collecting files from students, uh, we have some different ways that we do that. So the first way is the direct share, where the student just goes in, shares it, and what we started doing was having our students use a naming convention. And I can't stress this enough. This is super important. If you're not doing this, do it. Find a way in your district to make it building level, grade level, district level, whatever. We have the kids name their file by, if they're at the middle or the high school, their class hour, so third hour in this case, their last name, and then whatever the topic is, the teacher tells them that that assignment is. So in this case, persuasive essay. What that does then for the teacher, it's totally a selfish thing, as I was using Google Drive with my students. When all those files were getting shared to me, I wanted to look at something real quick. Yes, I could see owned by when I was in my Google Drive. I could look in the, if I was in uh, my drive here, and, and, or in my uh, shared with me, rather, and I could see the owned, the owner column. I could see what that was. But if we get kids just naming a file, you know, whatever they think it is, then there's no easy way to search that. Part of the great power of using Google Drive is you throw a word up in that search bar at the top. Kid says, oh, I shared this to you, Mr. Kafka. You know, I shared this to you yesterday, and it's not where I think it should be. I could do a search for any part of his name, any part of the assignment, any part of the title, anything that's actually in the document, and that search result should come up. So by having that naming convention in place, what this helps do is teachers that are teaching a third hour, and they're specifically wanting to see their third hour students, could do a search for three, could do a search for three persuasive essay, or three essay, and everything would come up. And then when you do that search, can easily checkbox those things. Could just go down and check them one by one. Or as a tip, you can shift click further down, and it selects everything between the top and the, the click that you do at the bottom. Uh, it just allows for you to grab everything and, and shove that in a folder for you. Part of, the thing that, part of the things that we show to staff when we're doing trainings in our district is how this should make their lives easier. A lot of people that are new to Google Drive think, oh my god, it's a whole different thing. I'm so used to um, doing things in Word, or doing things with files on flash drives, or doing things in a different tool. And this just puts it all in one place. It's accessible anywhere. How many people are using Google Drive right now? With student? OK, good. Oh, good hand. OK, how many people are exploring it, maybe going to go to it? Just curious who's, OK, good. That's good to know. So this resource will help you hopefully get some kind of structure in place if you work with your trainers and, and whoever's helping you do that. Um, this was the method I mentioned earlier. We have the students, first day of class or first week of class, they create what we call a turn-in folder. And again, this goes back to teaching them how the sharing rights work for a folder. So as a student, we have a student go in, and I'm going to jump over to a student account here. We have a student go in, and if the student is in a second hour, was that my time? Am I done? Or was that a phone? Oh, okay. <laughs> I was like, I'm getting the giant hook. Um, you go into uh, the student's drive. The student creates a folder. We have the students name the folder the same way. So if I'm in a uh, second hour language arts class and I'm a student, I would name it to my last name we're going to say is Smith, and this is my language arts folder. 
I would then go into, and we, we have the teachers walk through this with the students. It's also good for the teachers to know the sharing rights. That is a powerful uh, tool as well. When the teacher goes into the sharing rights, or the teacher or the student, they go down to the add people and they put in Kafka and then they choose from the, the, the Kafkas that come up, of which there's only one in our district. Um, but that will allow them to share it to them with edit rights. By doing that, then this becomes a kind of a, a drop folder. So the student is working on something, so super uber important paper. This should obviously have the correct naming convention, but the student can drag and drop this into the folder. Or what we've been teaching kids to do, because we've had a lot of issues with drag and drop, just because kids will accidentally drop it in the wrong place and think they turned it in, but maybe they didn't. We've been teaching the kids to use the check boxes. So checking something, when you check something, you get your tools up here at the top. You choose the folder that you want to put that thing in, and then you simply click on the folder, and whichever one is checked, it'll go into that folder. And by going into that folder that's already shared, shared because it's got the little person on it, that's just a visual cue that that little head and shoulders is there, that this is already shared, it'll automatically share to the teacher. So that's one way that we have students turn in files. That's been working very well at our middle school. Uh, we're talking about using some scripts, and I'm going to mention a few of those now that we're exploring going into the next school year. Um, oh, I should mention this first as well. One other thing that we do is we have our teachers, and they found this very beneficial. Our teachers will create a Google form. They will put it on their website or put it somewhere that the kids can get at it. And after the kids put a file in the folder, they'll tell the kids, OK, you've put the file in the folder. As a way to tell me that it's ready to be looked at or it's ready to be graded, go fill out this form. And the form is simply choosing your class hour from a drop down, putting in your first name, your last name, and then pasting the link to your file. Another good skill we need to teach to our kids, because a lot of kids don't think about copying links, pasting links. What this does for the teacher, again, a selfish thing, an efficient thing, an organized thing, it puts all those links in one spreadsheet. So as a teacher, when I open that one spreadsheet, that one form spreadsheet, I've got all my kids there, all the data's in one place, rather than going through folder by folder and looking for each kid's document, I can just click a link and it'll open that file as long as it's correctly shared to me which is then a good cue for the teachers of if they click a link and the file does not open, that means the kid didn't put it in the folder. Or that means there's an issue where the file or the folder is not shared correctly to the individual. So if that interests you, I know I kind of gave an overview of it, but there is a video I linked up in this document if you want to explore that, and it shows how to set it up. So all different ways to do this. At its core, sharing a file. Understanding how to share a file. Once, you're, once you understand how to share a file, moving on to then uh, sharing a folder, if you get that as a teacher, as an educator, then we can start talking about the fun tools, the magic. How many people use Google Scripts right now? Anybody? A few? Okay. One. Awesome. From Wisconsin as well. Woo! Go Packers. Any Packer fans? No Packer fans? Yes. There we go. All right. Good. Awesome. Okay. So, Scripts. Have you guys heard of Doctopus? Has anyone heard of Doctopus? A few people? Okay. So, before we talk about Doctopus, one thing that is super important as an educator Make a spreadsheet, make a roster of your kids. Do this at the beginning of the year. Take the time to do it. Uh, if you have a student information system like PowerSchool, you can, you can usually export that stuff out as a CSV, a spreadsheet file. By having the data, because Google's known for data, by having the data all in one place, it's so easy to use a bunch of these scripts. This is an example. One of our um, teachers, our seven White House at our elementary school, we have a house system, language arts teacher. So she made a spreadsheet of the kids' first names, last names, email addresses, class hour. Something as simple as that. What happens then is when you go and run a script, the script you run in a spreadsheet, and I don't know if I did a screenshot of this. Let me check. I didn't do a screenshot of this. Um, what happens is you go into your spreadsheet, you go under tools, and there is a place called the script gallery. And there's a video linked up that shows this whole process. I didn't want to show you the whole process because it would take a little bit more time than we have. But you go into the script gallery, you install a script. This script in particular, Doctopus, created by an educator named Andrew Stillman out of New York. Uh, it adds a little drop-down menu here. So then when I go to the Doctopus drop-down, that then gives me the cho choice to launch the script. When I go through the steps of the script, what this does is it walks me through four steps. It asks me, pick a file that you want to automatically share to all your kids. You want to make a copy of it and share it to each kid. So an example for me was I taught a new media class. I had done a script template. I'm going to say script in different terms here. I had done a uh, script for a podcast, or a screencast, rather. The kids were going to write out their script to read from. 
So I had done a template, and I had said, you know, this first part should include you introducing yourself, also write down what your visual is, and I wanted to share that uh, out to them so that they could take and use it. I wanted to just get it to them as quick and efficient as possible. I used Octopus to do that. Where it ran, it took each kid's email address from the row. I also got the choice to name the file, like we talked about a minute ago with naming conventions. So it took the class hour, the last name, and then I said new media screencast was what we had called it. Um, and it made the file and it shared it to them. What that looks like then for the teacher is the script runs and it just does everything for you. It's seriously magic. It's just awesome how it happens. Uh, it puts the link to each kid's file in the spreadsheet for you. And this file also appears then in the kids shared with me area. So they get a, they get a document that shows up that says one Smith new media screencast. They can open that. They can work in that. They are an editor. There is um, an awesome component that they just added recently. If you're a reader, or if you're a reader, if you are a uh, language arts teacher, we use the Readers Writers Workshop where we have our kids conferencing with our, our, our uh, teachers a lot. And so through that, um, part of that Readers Writers Workshop is to assess the kids with rubrics. A piece of this is once everything is said and done, and oh, it's down here, it's a little hard to see, you can run a rubric that you create. You create a rubric in a, in a spreadsheet. By running this rubric, you can choose, it's a little hard to see here, but the teacher had clicked on this choice for the assignment and these two choices and given the kids, or given the kids, I'm sorry, given the kids a nine, an eight and a half, and it kind of grayed those cells in. This gets deposited in the bottom of the kids' documents. And again, I know I'm talking kind of ambiguously if you haven't seen that, the videos that I linked up from Andrew Stillman uh, his website explains how to run Doctopus, and then there's a great Gubrick video here by um, another fellow uh, Google trainer, Jay Atwood, where he goes through and shows how to do this. You do have to do this in Chrome. If you're not a Chrome user, I highly suggest you get Chrome. If I could marry a browser, I would marry Chrome. My <laughs> wife thinks it's weird, but she's okay with that. Um, so definitely check that out. Another script that I've been exploring, and I personally have not tried it yet, is G-Class folders. What G-Class Folders does, and we're looking at this maybe as an option as we go into the fall, is um, it does a lot of the folder structure building for you. This is from uh, Bjorn Berendt and Andrew Stillman, another uh, script that Andrew Stillman helped to build. And basically, you set up kind of the same thing. You have a spreadsheet, you run this script, and it creates different folders for the kids. It also will create, and I don't remember if it's in this screenshot. Uh, yes, for, the, for a particular class, it creates an art, if this was an art class, a view folder, so kids can only view those files, they can't change them, they can't edit them, and then also an edit folder where they could go in and if you had some collaboration occurring where you wanted kids to put their, put their um, if they were signing up for something in a spreadsheet or whatnot, that would give the kids the edit ability. So some great options there with uh, G Class folders and Doctopus. As another resource I want to share with you, as we got into Google Drive and using Google Drive, a lot of quick tips came up a lot of quick questions, rather. And so what I did was I turned those into quick tips for our staff. So I put together, I called it a 20-ish second tech tip um, because you can't really get it done in 20 seconds, as I found, as I originally called it a 20-second tech tip. But this is a link. You can click on that when you come back to the presentation later. Um, it's just a playlist I've been building for our staff, and I've been sharing it out as I do it. Uh, sharing is caring, so we'll go with that. And playlist of different little tips, little tricks to make your life easier if you're using any of these tools in Google Drive. Ah, so that is some quick information that I could give you. I'll hang out a little bit over here. Uh, if you have any direct questions, I'll be happy to answer those. I'll leave this up for a minute. And again, if you go to these slides and you poke your way through the slides, um, you're welcome to uh, take and use or share out any of that. Also, one thing. When you, get a, when you go to a link for a file like this, I'm going to make all of you swear and promise right now. When you go to a file that is set so anyone can view it, you're welcome to pass that link on. You just copy that link, shoot it out to whoever. Don't click the share button. As much as you, I was just talking about sharing, if you click the share button and you request access, there is no possible way any human can go and add each person's individual email address in there. So that's why a lot of times as a strategy, you leave your files as view only. Anyone can just send that link on to someone else. So pass the link on. Um, if you click share, I, I probably won't respond because I do get a lot of requests, but it's, it's there for you to, to take and use and do what you want. So thanks so much again, Chad Kafka, and uh, check out the, the slides.